Pro-democracy support in Hong Kong was tested at the polls today as residents voted in local district council elections. Turnout was high and the vote was peaceful in contrast to the violent anti-government demonstrations that have pitted Hong Kong's government against pro-democracy demonstrators over the past six months. 452 seats were at stake in Hong Kong's 18 district councils, and the results are expected to be a referendum on the conflict. Joining us now via Skype from Hong Kong is New York Times reporter Austin Ramsey. Austin, uh, we saw the pictures of people lined up. How, how significant was this turnout? Uh, turnout was, was huge. 71% uh, of uh, eligible voters, almost 3 million people, um, long lines at lots of polling stations around the city. Um, huge, huge interest in this, this, this election. So it comes down to the pro-Beijing party and the pro-democracy party. Are those the two kind of biggest ones that are fighting for all of these smaller seats? Yes. I mean, it's, it's divided among several parties and several um, unaffiliated uh, uh, candidates. Um, but, but those are the two largest camps, the, the sort of establishment pro-Beijing camp and then the pro-democracy pro camp. And what's the ripple effect of this election? Is this what decides the legislative council that makes the rules? Or how does, I mean, this is, a, otherwise we would not be talking about a relatively small city council election. That's right. It's, it's, it's surprising that there's been so much interest and focus on this election. Um, the district council deals with very local issues. As I saw the candidates campaigning in my neighborhood, they had signs about, you know, um, trash cleanup and, bus stop placement and taking care of leaky air conditioners that were drip, dripping from buildings, very, very local things like that. Um, but they do have a role in selecting the chief executive. Um, Hong Kong has a sort of a convoluted semi-democratic system. The chief executive is chosen by a panel of about 1,200 people, and the, um, the district councils choose about 120 of those, or about 10% of those. So it does have a role in choosing the top office in Hong Kong. But the other reason this vote was so important is that it has been a referendum on, on the protests this summer. While you and I are talking, they are still counting the votes, and it's kind of too early to say exactly how this election is breaking at the moment. But let's say, for example, let's kind of go through both scenarios. If the if the pro Beijing party has a whatever, a decisive win, and they are the ones who will be electing the kind of uh, the chief executive of Hong Kong, what does that say to the demonstrators? Are they going to say, okay, well, we lost this round, that's it, no more protests? Yes, yeah, so if, if that scenario were to happen, and I, I, it seems like the less likely of the scenarios, mm -hmm. uh, it, it would sort of say that people have had enough, um, people are, are tired of the disruptions related to the protest, and and would, are moving towards the establishment. The pro-Beijing camp has traditionally won this election because it, it has more money and it's, it's better organized at a very grassroots level. So they, they have won this, um, this election ever since Hong Kong uh, became part of China. So now well, let's try the inverse. If the pro-democracy groups win this election, what does that signal to China? That would be quite a big shock. As, as, as I said, you know, this is a, an election that has sort of been controlled by the, by the pro-establishment camp. And um, as, as returns are coming in, we've already seen some very prominent names from the establishment camp lost. Um, the pro-democrats have picked up a, a lot of seats, although we don't know if it'll be enough seats to control all the district councils, but a significant number of seats. And it will sort of, it, this is the first time where those, those numbers of people that have been on the street have actually been able to cast a vote. And it will really put those, um, those numbers will, will actually have some meaning. All right. Austin Ramsey of The New York Times joining us via Skype from Hong Kong tonight. Thanks so much. My pleasure.